so we are here today with Susan. She's one of our newer artists. Um, we're super excited to have her. And I can tell you, a lot of people are enjoying your work. A lot of people come in and as, you know, and, and I tell this to everyone, but you can, we watch people as they walk in, they'll sort of scan and their eyes a lot of times will fall on particular art. And many times they'll, your art catches their eye. So we're getting a lot of positive feedback. So hopefully, hopefully that'll grow and lots of good things are coming. Um, so basically we're just kind of chit-chatting today. We'll let you talk about you. So introduce yourself and give a little bit of your background and really what, what brought you to this point okay. as an artist. I'm Susan Abel. I grew up in Rockmart, which is close to Rome. I lived there all my life until I went to college, went to the college in LaGrange, and um, two years there, and then transferred to the University of Georgia, where I met my husband, and you know, you know that's where the story began there. <laughs> but um, I always thought that I would go to college and do art. I was the kind of kid in high school that um, I was in, I liked to sing. So I was in musicals, and I was always the one to paint the backdrop too. So I was behind the scenes. I liked both. I liked the messy, and I liked you know being part of the group that's the music part. But my folks were afraid that I was going to be a starving artist, and I think my dad had the image of his artists men on the street selling their velveteen paintings or something. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. But um, some of those historical stories, they were, know, they were starving of, artists. <laughs> there were, they really were. And you know, this kind of, you know, that genre of downtown Atlanta, I have a lot of relatives who live downtown Atlanta. I used to go to Atlanta quite a bit to visit them. And you just like, oh. and I think the, they, they made a little mistake there. Because when I was not quite 17, I was my French teacher in high school, went with a group to Europe for the summer. And uh, I think that exposure to the museums of the world, you know, that um, whether it was Van Gogh or it was the French Impressionist, and I, knew, I always knew that I, I was gravitate toward at art, period. But uh, I kind of like, oh, you know, I, re I really like this. And I, I just started, you know, randomly thinking, I'm going to apply to school. I'm going to school in Switzerland. I just sounded glamorous. <laughs> Yeah, you not, not including my parents, and I'm just gonna, I'm just gonna apply, and then well, I'll, I'll, you know, the mailbox would be stuffed with all yeah. of this stuff. And, but anyway, long story short, so you know that just like that was did not practical. So I ended up majoring in education, elementary education, which is actually a kind of a good fit for someone who is a creative artsy bent kind of you know bent because I, I could use it. I utilized that an awful lot. In my um, 30 years of teaching, um, about half of that, especially when my children were younger, it worked out. I was a kindergarten teacher, and I taught a school system in Dalton that was a big proponent of the arts. So whatever children write, whatever grade, whatever life grade level it was, they um, wanted them to illustrate. So that was perfect for me. I, you know, I love to write. And I love to uh, incorporate that. So I also had an opportunity that they um, like to send teachers to workshops that would just kind of integrate something new that would kind of um, just be another hook. And that happened to be the Summer Institute. It was funded by the Getty Center. And it was, you know, prestigious Getty. You think of, you know, the Getty from California. What? But uh, this was the University of Tennessee, Chattanooga. It's not so far away, but it was two summers, and um, what it entailed was you you had to incorporate the museums. There's a lot of museums in Chattanooga, the Hunter Museum being one of them. You know, has a vast collection of American art, which love that. But one of the other things that I'd also do doing a workshop at the same time was writing, encouraging children to creative writing. Well, the two kind of mesh very well for me because you would encourage children is critical thinking skills, like what do you see, what's there, what do you think might happen, that kind of thing. It didn't matter what grade level, because I always, I still would use that, that kind of premise. And so we also were given art prints, and so that would be kind of the, you know, the 
basis for children's language skills and later on their writing. So I use that a lot. And during that time, we also were videotaped to do it because they wanted to see because they their court it was not possible to come observe. You know, right. while, while, although you know we got the kids kind of got used to at that time. People from all over would just wander in. <laughs> They're doing something over there, kind of different. Let's go see what it is. But I, but I did that a lot, and I've had, fortunately, in seven school systems where I talked, because of my husband's work, and that was the other, other reason for sticking with regular education, because we moved quite a bit yeah. due to his career. So I would, you know, I had no trouble finding work. You know, I, I taught other grades. I taught every grade area you know in elementary school but it enabled me to incorporate the arts and, and kind of foster that with children so that kind of journey and so as far as the the art personal art career I would always do uh, art on, you know it was on the back burner I would um, encourage children to draw you know whether at the beginning of the year you always have to do something about yourself <laughs> you're always doing uh, what about me well I would teach them how to do you know a face portrait do that and you know to draw and then I then I'd erase it. Oh I said, you don't want a copy of the teachers, it's yours. Yeah. So always you know encouraging. So that was kind of a big deal with me to encourage children to develop their own skills and not say you can't draw, you can't do this or you know, you can do whatever that's you right. strive to do. That's right. So that's been important to me. And um, so my own art journey, I would do that on the side. You know, I would do it on the weekends or I would, uh, in the summer, I always kept something out, painting, doodling, you know, sketchbook, painted a little bit more. But once I retired, it became a full-time pursuit. So I, um, you know, I, I just kind of knew I wanted to do that. I wanted to do something creative. One of my daughters had a fashion merchandising background. And I have creative kids, naturally, you know, they, <laughs> they got the kids. <laughs> Definitely. But we had talked about, because I, my other pension was baking, because I, I, I talked about, you know, starting baking. And she said, so we went, we took a couple of classes through the Small Business Administration. Mm -hmm. and, and, you know, unfortunately, in our county, you had to have a complete commercial kitchen in your home. Uh -huh. So I was like, hmm. I don't know if that's going to work, I said, but, uh, you know, the painting was always there. I never felt like I was, every weekend, about grading papers, I'm like, I, I got to go paint a little bit, I got to go do something. So, I, you know, that was often the thing. So, I just said, well, you know, I'm just going to get my feet wet, and, and then I do it with my kids. Well, my son is a software engineer. <laughs> that, so, well, you need you need to do this, you need to be on Facebook, you need to do that, because I had really just a shoe that and you know, colleagues would say, Well you need to be on there, you need to be on there. Because I knew you I, you know I didn't need another instruction. But I went along and I did that and they kinda helped me get you know get my feet wet, you know, because I you know I, they knew that I would not promote myself. I didn't I didn't Oh, well, you know, it's fine promoting kids, but yeah. you know, once it was out there, and so you know, it was kind of different. Like people were like, oh, yeah, I know, how many of you did that? But you know, some people might remember that I had painted a large mural at one school. I was asked to do that because it was historical. Teachers, grandparents had owned the property and mm -hmm. been a farm, so um, I had done that. I had taught in camps. You know that kind of thing yeah. in the summer, yeah. so it was kind of like people. Oh yeah, yeah, I forgot you did it. But then you forget if someone's teaching math right. that oh yeah, that I said, this is actually what I do. <laughs> <laughs> what I do. Oh, so, right. so gradually, um, after the first couple of years, you find all different kinds of places to sell. Uh, you know, in Athens, it's a creative town, but they, you know, there's just you got to find your right niche. Um, Probably all kinds of places. Pizza place. Yeah. There was a you know a healthy a health food kind of uh, grocery store that had a little odd alcove where they displayed art. And so I mean, so I availed myself. I did all those kinds of things. And um, besides two local art communities yeah. you know, in Oconee County and in Athens, so I did that. And one of them involved you know you can sit in the, the shop and they had a nice gallery shop and that kind of thing. I think COVID kind of changed that. They kind of had to switch gears and not so much, but, but a lot of things entered local shows. Then I um, entered some 
did a lot of our shows, art festival things, a lot of them around Atlanta. Mm -hmm. And um, you asked me about, you know, like, you know, people responded. You really learn. I liked that thing. It was a lot of work. A lot of work for my husband and my son <laughs> to set up the tent. Yeah. And Thank God for the family that will do the heavy lifting. Oh, man. I mean, I, yeah. That, that was the challenge. Part. You learn a lot. Yeah. I, I enjoyed meeting people. Enjoyed meeting other artists. But I just kind of, you know, yeah, that really isn't for me. Um, you know, to, to do that for people who do that monthly or even, um, you know, annually. So I've kind of stuck with the festivals and things close by, mm -hmm. you know, events. But I, one of the things I enjoy the most is the getting the feedback from people. Because people would say to me, and they said, you know, there are a lot of paths in your paintings. I said, right. I said, Right, <laughs> and I would be amazed. I said, "You got it exactly," and that, I said, "Yeah, that's kind of the thing." I yeah. said, "You know, my, you know, thing because I'm, I am a self-taught artist, and you know, I st you know, studied, and you know, have all kinds of DVDs and books and things like that, and different artists that I follow and keep up with." But basically, as far as the skill, you know, I'm self-taught. But when I was amazed, and people would cast it, yeah, that is the point. That, you know, we're all on a journey, that it's the path and the light. The light. And yeah. so, I'll, you know, I always, you know, I'm drawn toward that. So I feel other people would be, you know, mm -hmm. they would be. So I kind of always see my painting as something like um, offering hope mm -hmm. and serenity. I have a, a friend that I had talked with. She, she's older than me. I had done a commission for her years before from a, a sunset vacation. She's her example. But on Instagram, she she is the sweetest person, the sweetest lady. And she, she she calls herself an encourager, and she really is. She'll say the kindest things to me. And I said, because she and her husband can no longer go to that vacation spot, but she tells me that pain reminds me that Place. And that means a lot yeah, to me, you know. Yeah. And so that is one thing I want to capture something that maybe reminds you of a favorite place or somewhere in your childhood, but something you know that is a connection. And, and she's always picking up on that, and she'll say something in the comment section like, "Oh, I love this. This is so peaceful. Oh, I just want to go there. Oh, this reminds me of my grandparents' farm, or something like that." And I said, "Oh, you know, thanks for that. Yeah, because, because that's." That's the whole point. Yes, absolutely. Absolutely. And it, it's beautiful that you say that because the theme for us, a lot of the mission for the gallery is that art speaks to people. Yeah. And it speaks hope. It speaks comfort. Um, and I always want to make sure that we're projecting positive. And even as a self-taught artist, what I'm hearing you say is, there were many years that you planted seeds. So that's a big thing for, for us as well. And so now I know exactly why you fit in so well with our, with our art family is because planting seeds, those seeds grow. Right. So you planted seeds in those children's lives, right. their creativity and your own. And when art speaks to a person and it speaks that happiness to them, you can't get that from, I don't know of anything else in our world that right. you can really get that from. And it's, it's, it's really kind of a, a personal thing because an art piece will speak differently to different people. But that's what I feel like our purpose as artists is, is to plant those seeds into other people's lives so that they do feel the peace. They do feel that calm. They do, that beauty kind of brings happiness to them. So that seems to be kind of a theme that in all the artists I've met, that seems to be kind of a common common motivation. And so I, I just think that's beautiful. And as you continue to do that and you paint from the heart, you know, you will affect other people's lives in a positive way, even if it's for, just for that few moments. Right, right. It, you know, it's very meaningful to know that, it, you know, touch, you know it's, it's great, things sell, but, but it means, may sound strange, it's, you know, it's equally important that people find the connection mm -hmm. that whatever it is you know like you said whatever's in the painting that 
appeals to them. Mm -hmm. I like, I always go back through my photographs. I have lots of photographs, <laughs> and I go back and like, okay, right, this is what I'm getting out of this, and my sketchbooks. That's what I, I do in the car often for doing that, and I go back. Okay, what about this? You know, okay, this is similar to this. People seem to like that a lot. What do they like about that? You know, you know. So I'll kind of, kind of hone in on what was the appeal, appealing yeah. thing about it. Yeah. So, you know, it's, there's, there is a whole lot of commonality there. <laughs> different people, different places. Mm -hmm. There's a lot of psychology behind the color, and especially the light, you know, with that perfect sunset or sunrise. Right. Um, and a lot of the historical masters really tried to use the light to make that painting come alive. Um, and even in some of the other arts, the performing arts, the written arts, you know, storytelling, the emphasis comes out different ways, but it's just one of those planting seeds is the only way I know how to say it. <laughs> We're planting seeds. And if, when you look in hindsight, you can kind of see how that has occurred. So then to be purposeful with that going forward, I mean, what more could you want? So what, so what do you think your journey is kind of today forward? Will you just continue to kind of paint from the heart or what do you think? Uh, so people ask me sometimes, will I paint portraits or something like that? And, and, and I say no, you know, the, not that I wouldn't want to try, but I say no, I kind of am drawn to um, landscapes and I do paint botanical, but for the same reason flower because of the light the way it's light is filtered you know anything well you know anything God's creation we're going to be appreciative you know right? and I want to focus on you know look look at look at the beauty of this and look at the detail in this flower you know that that's incredible <laughs> and sometimes that I think we don't notice things like that I know myself I'm, I, you know I, I love nature I love taking walks but it wasn't until I was being purposeful mm -hmm. out walking and I started noticing you know the neighbors you know the viruses and I would tell them to take pictures out of you know just you know, lots of pictures lots of pictures of them, <laughs> you know, those and those but it, you know it really is something that you have to kind of just think about so I think um, probably I'll continue that but I, 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 do, I do like flowers and I have done a lot of pet portraits that you know one time done those I like animals but I think I kind of gravitate I found I have a niche and I you know kind of and I keep a list of things that I've painted or I go along with okay where is this and it's funny that all my three kids you know won't, won't confer but they'll send me pictures my <laughs> son will go somewhere and he'll just take a picture and no words typical got enough words yep. guess where I am he'll be um in the mountains and he'll know that he has an eye for that he does he really <laughs> he's a, the gene like, is there he, he is, has an eye for that and, I'm like, okay, good. And, and so the um, next one might be somewhere else he was, takes a picture and one daughter will find well you may be able to just do one sitting you know, I know just the trends are just one single palm frond or something like that uh, you know like that and that um, they know just that and the other one will pictures of animals because that's that's what she does <laughs> <laughs> that is a relationship too <laughs> right right is so I know a picture so we communicate through yes pictures. yes absolutely a picture is truly worth a thousand words and then when you can paint that and extend the message oh yeah that is a beautiful thing so you live in Athens yes and the plan is to stay in Athens stay in Athens we talk about when my husband Really retires that um, we would like to have somewhere on the coast, maybe part time, also the gallery on Florida's coast. Mm -hmm. So it gives us a reason to go <laughs> to either coast. But we've talked about you know just having somewhere just to uh, get away and then rent it out when we're not there, or you know our family can use it or something like that. Mm -hmm. but, but basically, we see ourselves. Hope so. We've been doing a lot of home improvement. <laughs> but enjoy it for that, a while. That's a deciding factor. <laughs> yeah. Well, and Athens is a Athens is a wonderful area. I mean, I'm a Georgia Bulldog. Yeah. 
I'm just going to throw that out there. We're definitely a home divided in my at my house. Are you? You know, the husband's Georgia Tech. I'm UGA, but what does he know, right? So Athens is a beautiful area, and there is a lot of art there. Um, I think more diverse art. If more diverse. A lot of abstract, which I have an appreciation for, but a lot of, you know, different kinds of that be more of a feel. Mm -hmm. Now, whenever I sold things, it was through the Art Center, which I revamped. So, you know, this, I was, you know, I sold art through the gallery. It was part of the guild. Mm -hmm. And when they kind of downsized that, changed that, and then I had to have surgery. I said, okay, well, it's time to do something else. So I just focus on the, the one, the community one in Oconee County, um, closer to the Watkins. Mm -hmm. Yeah, very familiar with that area. So, so that's a good plan. And <sighs> kind of circling back to some of the paintings that have sold, one of the things that we as a gallery can do is help with Providence information, which appraisers use to to kind of determine value of a painting. And so what I have learned as an appraiser is that historical documentation matters. Um, and I'm sure they've kept good documents as well. But anything that authenticates your work to you, right? So there could be a million landscape artists, but there's always going to be something about your style that's very unique and that's just true for every artist and I don't even know that I can explain it you know but I, I personally believe it's when an artist paints from their heart and paints with purpose like you're talking about and it's going to kind of come out it's almost like your your art signature so to speak um, so with all the exposure that we plan on from promoting you and promoting the gallery and promoting all of our artists coming up in the next few months Hopefully that'll be helpful. The other thing too, though, is um, your story. Your story matters, so that helps to authenticate too. So you have such a wonderful heart for art. That's actually hard to say, heart for art. Um, but going forward, I hope that we can kind of help you to kind of reach your dream too. And so I, you know, I ask a lot of artists. What is the one thing on your bucket list that you want to accomplish? If I could wave a magic wand, what's that one the thing? The one thing. The one thing for you or for your art or for Okay, both? the one thing we, um, my husband and I have always talked about what we're doing is to go to um, South of France, go to Giverny mm -hmm. and to paint in Monet's garden. Oh, yes. That would probably be it and just you know, spend some time in the countryside of France and Italy. But... Um, that would be just kind of sum it up. <laughs> there's there's an artist I follow who teaches a lot of workshops and you know and I and I point out to me and, and she's very easy and she spends a lot of time in nature with her dogs or a horse and but it's done I was like, one day I'm gonna do that. Yes, absolutely. Absolutely. And that's very doable. That's a very realistic yes. goal. Yes, it is. Do you do a lot of plein air painting with your landscapes? I, I don't so much, but um, I need to get another kind of easel that can do them. I have three, but one I just keep on the back deck, you know, just kind of like a telescoping, it's like a tripod kind of thing. And then I have two of the nicer conventional ones in my little studio space, converted from a bedroom. <laughs> but. Um, I will use, I, t I take a lot of photographs, and what I do when I'm in a location, so like Jekyll Island, is I'll do a lot of sketches and keep a lot of watercolor pencils. And I have tablets, and I have watercolor paper, and, and, I'll, and I'll do that sometimes. But I'd like to do a little plain air, but mostly I've done it just in my, um, my yard, you know, my deck, something like that. But, and I work from my photographs. I tell you, I, I took several of those. This is Great Beach Sunrise. Mm -hmm. But these. Uh, this is actually my favorite. It is. Um, and that would be my second. Just that, so peaceful. It makes me just want to kind of walk into it. That was, I think it was in the Tampa Gardens. Oh, yeah. Walking, you know, it's like a lot of walking trips. Cumberland Island. But I mean, these are, I mean, places we went. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Mm -hmm. But that, that, you know, it might, it, when you know that, it might be something to someone else, too. Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah, we were walking around that hill, we were walking around, we didn't know where we were going. <laughs> <laughs> it's an adventure. It's like, okay, there are no people. <laughs> so it can keep, keep going. Mm -hmm. Definitely tell the story of an adventure. Well, and I know 
historically the masters who did some of the plein air paintings that took days it did. and it was a lot of work and so I'm not so sure that's realistic it really isn't I think I kind of think a lot a lot of artists do um, take small panels take them out and do a, what they call a study mm -hmm. small, and do it all at once and then go back to their studio and do it larger so that I kind of more of that you know for that thing you know I think in that terms mm -hmm. because I, I would imagine that I wouldn't think I would have to have everything no and then you're fighting the wind and, and the, the wind and the weather and okay yes I would and get hungry ants. yes <laughs> yeah I mean, I'll think about that you know. but I, I do I do watch all those areas I admire all those people that no matter the weather they're out working or uh, I've seen one artist that the weather didn't work out and I guess she was in the mountainous area she ended up having to get the back of her car oh wow yeah, but she got the little painting done. That's commitment. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Absolutely. Well, and I think when an artist perfects their process, so as you're saying, even right. working from a photo, if you're there, you have the visual. Right. Versus just pulling a photo up off the internet, you're going to miss out on some of those details. But right. if you're in person seeing it and you have the photo or the study, Right. And then all of that translates onto the final canvas. Right. I mean, that process is, I mean, what more could you want, right? Right. That's it. <laughs> well, I'm excited to hear you mention Monet because he's actually one of my favorites, too. Yeah, he's my favorite. So maybe we'll, maybe we'll plan a gallery trip. To maybe so, yeah. That, oh, would, that would be a good one. I can, yeah, take, go back and reread all those coffee table books I have. <laughs> Well, we definitely are thankful. Thankful that you're here. Thankful that you let us represent your art. Um, a lot of good things coming. You know, we're letting our little secrets out a little at a time, but we really have a lot of plans for um, good things coming to the gallery. So I'm thankful that you're a part of that. Well, I'm just excited to be here. And I, I just feel like there's a connection. Mm -hmm. and, and I love the journey you're on, too. Oh, thank yeah. you. I truly believe we can grow together. So, so thank you for coming today. Is there anything else that you'd want kind of the world to know? And I'll tell you, ten years from now, I still, I still plan. I'll just speak it in faith that people still going to be watching this video ten years from now. So, what, what would you want kind of the world to know over the next ten years as people watch this video? What, what's the one thing well, that you'd want? Well, I remember one artist that. Um, so that I, I loved what precious artists who painted outside in South Carolina and Georgia coast and she died suddenly and and I would say that the big thing is find your whatever it is you love you enjoy whatever gift God has given you put your heart and soul into it and you know she always said it's never too late I love that because that is so true never too late my name is Mary Gilbertson she was wonderful